Welcome to Beat Diabetes, where it's my job to encourage you to know that you can overcome this monster that has attacked your health. And today we'll hear from a man who did just that. He had glucose levels over 300 after his meals. But when he made some changes and added some foods to his diet and dropped some foods from his diet, he saw results lightning fast. This next comment is from a man named Alex. He says it's been nine months on diabetes med medicine, but things were getting out of hand already. But after following your advice and watching several videos about blood sugar monitoring after every meal, and I really never say monitor after every meal. In the beginning, that's probably a, a great idea if you can afford the strips. After a while, you'll kind of figure it out. Uh, if I'm going to eat a hamburger patty and an egg and an avocado for dinner, I really don't need to test myself and see how much I spike. I know I'm not going to spike much. <laughs> and likewise, if I'm going to have a big bowl of macaroni and cheese and a big chunk of bread, I don't hardly need to test myself then either because I know I'll spike a tremendous amount. But there are some iffy foods where you're just not sure, and I still do that. So, but anyway. He says he watched videos about the importance of blood sugar monitoring after meals, which I firmly preach and believe. He says, I have so far attained my first certificate from your anti-blood sugar university. <laughs> I love it. This guy has a creative mind. Anti-blood sugar university. Well, I've never thought of it in those terms, but hey, sounds good to me. The blood sugar monitor, he puts in parentheses. I've changed my diet into vegetables, meat, protein, and high fats, no more wheat products and rice, no fruits so far, and in two weeks, my fasting sugar is in the, drum roll please, my fasting blood sugar is in the 90s. This guy has uh, been on diabetes meds, which means he was up there pretty high, he doesn't say how high, but now he's got blood sugar uh, fasting blood sugar in the 90s. And there's a lot of people that have been at, at uh, working at uh, trying to get the, into the 90s for years and never quite get there. He says, after my meals, my blood sugar doesn't go beyond 130 milligrams per deciliter now. Okay, now he does give one of his uh, numbers. He says it's down from 300. So he was having post-meal blood sugar or day throughout the day blood sugar of 300 milligrams per deciliter. I don't know offhand what kind of an A1C that would translate into. I would guess somewhere around 11 or so, a really high. So he was having 300 milligram per deciliter blood sugar throughout the day. Now, even his peaks don't go beyond 130. Wow. I'd call that beating diabetes. I don't know about you. In fact, I'd go so far as to call it reversing diabetes. If nothing else, he has reversed his numbers for sure. If you were having blood sugar in the 120s and then 150s and 200s, and now you're in the 300s, and suddenly you go down to the 150s, and now you're down into the 130s after a meal and 90s in fasting, I'd say you reverse something <laughs> for sure. And he's just one more testimony of victory over diabetes. We just hear them all the time. I was thinking about this today, and it made me think about the movie called Miracle on 34th Street. Now, Americans almost all know that. It's an old Christmas movie. Actually, they've made, I think, three different versions of it. I like the 1949, I think, version or 47 with Maureen O'Hara and uh, Natalie. Um, Natalie, somebody or other. Anyway, Miracle on 34th Street. Now, here's, here's the point of that movie that, that I think relates to what we're seeing here. The, there's a man that's trying to prove that a little old man who thinks of himself as Santa Claus really is Santa Claus. And he's trying to prove it in, in court so that the little old man doesn't have to go to some kind of an institution for being insane. So he's trying to prove he really is Santa Claus. Well, that's a hard thing to prove, right? But the lawyer finds out that the, the post office 
has been sending this little old man all the letters addressed to Santa Claus. So they've been sending him, anytime there's a letter addressed to Santa Claus, instead of putting it in the dead letter bin, they just deliver it to this little old man and get the, the mail off their hands. And so they send it to this guy who thinks of himself as Santa Claus. So the lawyer goes before the judge and he says, well, the post office is a government institution. It's actually against the law to deliver mail to the wrong person. And they've delivered to this man that I'm defending letters addressed to Santa Claus. So if the government recognizes him as Santa Claus, uh, who are we to say he's insane for calling himself Santa Claus? The, the defense counselor says, well, just because they sent one or two letters to him doesn't prove anything. He said, oh, do you want some evidence of it? Uh, and the, the, the uh, rather the prosecutor, he asked the prosecutor, do you want some, some more evidence of it than just one or two letters? He says, sure, bring it on. So he brings in one postal worker after another with huge bags of letters into the thousands of letters, and they pile these thousands of letters on top of the judge's desk and uh, are, until the judge can barely see over all these letters, thousands of them, as evidence that the U.S. government thinks this little old man must be Santa Claus because they keep delivering him letters. Now, you say, what in the world does that have to do with anything? I was thinking about this, and I thought, you know, if someone tried to accuse me of spreading misinformation and that my what I recommend is all wrong and I could just start naming doctors that are on YouTube and that write books that are saying the exact same thing that I'm saying, Dr. Bernstein, Jason Fung, Dr. Eric Westman, uh, there's a Dr. Berger, Dr. Bosworth, uh, all these doctors that are saying the same thing. If they accused all of us of spreading misinformation, we could just bring up one testimony after another, after another, just like they did on Miracle on 34th Street, just pile them up so high, nobody could argue with it. And I could by myself, just with the thousands of uh, testimonies that I've received and seen in the comments and by emails, and I even get some uh, by mail. I could, I could keep a judge <laughs> busy for a year with just the testimonies uh, that I have seen of people who have beaten diabetes and got their numbers down into the normal range. And I consider when you get below pre-diabetic, the normal range. But really, if you get into the fives at all, even the upper fives from 10, 11, 12 A1C, uh, you have done yourself a world of good. So the evidence is out there in lives of men and women, men and women from their 30s, in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and so forth tremendous evidence for the efficacy. Efficacy is a good word. It means it works. <laughs> the efficacy of the low-carb slash keto diet, it really, really works. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.